Howdy, Howdy stickies. stickies! Welcome back to another episode of the Stick with Kaji podcast. I'm Luann. And I'm Sean. So this is an episode to pick up from last time where I talked about why I decided to go to a fitness camp. So if you want to watch that, it's up here. But this is a continuation of my thoughts and feelings and pros and cons of the fitness camp that I was at. So if you're interested, stay tuned. <laughs> For disclaimer, we are not doctors, right? We are not dietitian, nutritionist, or I don't have any degree in anything that has to do with health. Mm -hmm. um, so this is from my personal experience at this particular camp. So it might not be the same as other camp, you know, but I just wanted to just review the camp and what the pros and cons and things I like about it because I know most people have never been there. So if you're curious, this video is for you. Welcome. House. So the camp that I picked, it is a seven day camp. It's a week's camp. You check in on a Sunday at 4 p.m. around there and they give you dinner. You know, and that's pretty much it. And the rest of the day or evening is up to you. You can do whatever you want. And mm -hmm. some camps, you know, you kind of live in the same house and then you just have your own room. Other camps, you just stay at a hotel. So that's the oh, one that I picked. I picked, I stayed at the hotel because I'm a very introverted person. So I don't, I, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable just having my own room. And then I go to the living room and see random people. Yeah. So I thought I picked the one where it's a hotel. So I feel more privacy. You so know? the entire hotel is for this camp? No, oh. so a section of the hotel. Oh, so there's other people who's just only staying solely to stay at the hotel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the camp kind of rent out the space. Oh, I at see. the hotel. Gotcha. On Sunday, they say don't eat, you know, um, and you can only drink water. So when you wake up the next morning, they say be there at 6 a.m. And so they they measure you. They check your weight. They do your blood test and everything. Oh, blood test too? Yeah. Wow, that's intense. What's that? It's part of how we tailor your wellness journey. I, I, I. And then they had orientation you know to kind of talk about the camp and they give you a schedule so you know what you're gonna do at a certain time so it mainly starts at 6 or 6 30 and it ends at 5 p.m god so and how many people were there so when i went there there were close to 40 people oh wow that's yeah. a lot of people it, it is a lot of people but they kind of break you up into little groups you know when you work out or when you do health classes mm -hmm. Because some people been there before, so you, you're not on the same level as somebody who's been there for a while. So if you rather do Pilates or mm -hmm. yoga versus HIIT training, yeah. so you sign up for each class, and so each class is a, a smaller group. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so I came in and I checked my results, and the results that I got back, I was heartbroken. See, it even tells you <laughs> that I should lose 19.8 pounds of body fat. That's tough, because when you lose weight, not only you lose fat, but you also lose sometimes muscle too. Right. So just solely losing 20, close to 20 pounds of fat, that's a lot. <laughs> right. I think you lose around 3 to 5% of muscle mass per decade and most men during their lifetime lose up to 30 percent of their muscle mass and you don't want to lose muscle mass because you know if you do then it could lead to bone fracture you know like your hip or you can break an arm or leg more easily so yeah so it's best to just preserve what you have and the best way you can do that is through strength training <laughs> um, and then the blood results came back too, and my cholesterol was too high, and I'm not eating enough of the good fats, you know? And so I was like, wow, I, I thought I was eating kind of healthy, but obviously not. So that was an eye opener. And then after orientation, they give you the schedule. And then when the breakfast food came out, another eye opening thing was the portion size was so small. That was an eye opener and it realized I've been overeating <laughs> for so long. And then also, you know, they said a lot of their food is not heavily seasoned with salt or sugar because, you know, a lot of people have too much sodium in their diet. So when I ate the food, I thought it was a little bland, but they promised me, they said, just try it out, you know, without the sodium 
and just give your body and your taste bud a chance to reset. So that's what I did, you know, and try. But the first few days was hard. You know, the first few days I was like, I need some salt and pepper, you know? Usually like, you know, they have, they have yeah. little packets that you can add, but they, right. they don't give you those things. Huh? They don't because <laughs> they said in normal people diet, you already consuming so much added salt. You don't need to add salt on top of it. They're right, you know? After breakfast, we did a fitness assess assessment where we had to run a whole mile mm -hmm. and I never ran a mile in my life. Mm. You you probably could run a mile. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like a run like like a marathon kind of speed Just or Just run at your own pace but try yeah. your best basically. You know, okay. do the best you can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One mile, yeah, I think doesn't sound too Really? But for me, bad. I never run. I always just yeah. walk. I can walk forever, but I cannot run. So a mile, I mean, they said that if you want to walk, you can. Just focus on your journey, you know? So that's what I did, but I was surprised. I ran the whole mile. Did I run fast? No, but I was huffing and puffing and I almost cried, you know? <laughs> and once I finally reached the finish line, you know, the coach was like, good job, Luan! And I was like, uh-huh. Here we go, come on, come on. Oh, that's good that you were able to finish it. Yeah, and it kind of sucked because, you know, if you're there for longer than a week, mm -hmm. then, you know, you can see how much you improve every week. Oh, they but, time you. Right, they oh. time you. So since I was only there for a week, you know, I don't really get to see my progress. I mean, I, I could have done it at home, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, the terrain is different. I'm walking outside and it's so foggy and it's raining. But yeah, after we did the assessment, they give you a snack and again, Oh, snack. Oh, right. What? Yeah. Well, you know, it's really important for you to feel your body when uh -huh. you work out, you know? The snack that they give you, it's either a fruit, oh, an oh, apple or a oh, pear, oh. Okay. some almond or a cheese stick. And then um, you can technically have more than one snack. They're not oh, going to so deny for, that, you. That's not, that's not what they give you. You have to choose from that. Right. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah. that's a difficult decision. <laughs> that's to pick. Once they gave me some almond butter. Almond butter? I've never heard that before. With apple, but it oh. wasn't the whole apple, guys. It was like three or four slices of apple, you know? Uh. And so, you know, the snack is important because the snack they give you, right, has lots of fiber, right? And so it kind of fills your body and then at the same time keep you fuller longer, you know? Mm -hmm. And after that, we had a nutrition one on one. Uh -huh. where they talk about nutrients, which was, again, another eye-opening experience because I do check the food label, but I kind of just check the calories. And then look, look, look at the package. It says healthy, so it got to be good for you, you know? But once you actually turn it around and read the label for yourself, you'll be mind-blown of all the added things they put in it. How many of you guys eat these? Nature Valley crunchy granola bars. Yeah, back then we thought that's a super healthy snack. Right, it says oats, you know, and I always heard oats are healthy, so. And I said, oh, 190 calories? Yeah, not bad at all, you know? If you actually turn back into the ingredients and read it here, how many added sugar does it say? Six gram. Six gram of sugar in one bar. All right, I'm pouring in the sugar here. That's three. That's already three? Four. Four? There it is. Wow, that's a lot. Look at it. Six grams wow. of sugar. When I see this, it was really eye-opening, thinking you just consume this. You know, double this. Yeah, I mean, that's just a snack, right? I right. Mean, other things that we eat, like, like, you know, sometimes I eat breakfast, a pancake for the breakfast, waffles. Right, and things like, have you guys eat these? Yeah, Doritos. That was legitness. If you look on the back of the nutrients, you know, you realize how much artificial things are going into your body too mm. that I didn't know. And if it says natural flavor, it's not natural. Okay, so apparently as long as the first ingredient is natural, no matter what goes after it, is still okay. So the first ingredients, like corn, for example, and the rest, whatever added things they can add to the corn, it's fine. There's no really that regulation. Oh. So if you go to the grocery stores, you see a whole bunch of ketchup, right? Mm -hmm. My favorite ketchup growing up is the Heinz ketchup. I mean, that's the only kind I know, actually. And even then, they had made so many different varieties of Heinz ketchup. They would have the organic one, right? They oh, have healthy. the 
Yeah, they have the no added sugar. Oh, that's even better. They have low sodium ketchup. But if you ch turn it around and check the nutrition label, it has four grams of added sugar. For one tablespoon, there is that much sugar. That's crazy. I know I, I use a lot, lot more than, than one, one teaspoon. teaspoon. Oh, yeah. I love ketchup. There's this thing about people like me, my sister too. There's a saying, have you ever heard of it? I add ketchup to my ketchup. I add ketchup to my ketchup. Yeah, I, I can see it because I was shocked when I first uh, we went to the KFC together. Mm -hmm. And Luann asked for ketchup and she dipped her fried chicken into ketchup. I, I use, didn't know people do that. I use ketchup for everything, okay? Even if it, it has already seasoned. <laughs> Even sandwiches. So the first time I went to Subway, I asked them for ketchup and they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and I said, wait, you guys don't have ketchup here? Because I grew up with eating so much ketchup. And every time I go to fast food places, you know how they give you those little small packages? Yeah. I always add for extra. I know. Every time I order for low end too, I just always just kind of feel bad because yeah. every time I go through the restaurant, I'm like, oh, okay. Here's one more packet. I was like, uh, can I have 10 more? And then, like, whoa. <laughs> Right, but I use them all, don't I? Crazy. Yeah, you do. Whoa. I've been consuming so much added sugar. And even the one that says no added sugar, right? It uses cellulose, which is it's a type, a type of, sugar, of sugar, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. I think I was just wasn't educated enough or I never really bothered to look, you know? Mm. Because the one that I found that I really like here is this one from Primal Kitchen. Contains no added sugar. Oh, nice. Right? You don't see any natural flavoring. You don't see anything with the fake sugar or anything like that. Right. And this one is the one that my kids actually really like. This one, it's a veggie ketchup. Mm. If you really like the Heinz flavor, this is not for you. But my kids can't tell a difference and they love it still. Look at the ingredients. Oh, wow. It's all natural stuff like tomato, apple vegetable puree, butternut, squash. Oh, the list is a lot less, like added things, the ingredients. Yeah. Versus here, the Heinz one, like just the list and list of the items that I can't, I even, can't tell even tell what it is. is. Right. A lot of people always say, if you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't eat it. You know, but I think in moderation is okay. Just be educated, I think. And just the fact that I didn't even know these type of alternative things existed you know even you're buying the expensive one just because it says organic here anyways so if so, you were to just buy this organic Heinz then rather you should just go for this one for exactly. just a tiny bit more extra for exactly Got you it. know especially if you're like me who consume so much of it right oh yeah for this one even for my diet i could eat this it says it's a uh, certified keto oh, yay but yeah, if you care, I mean, again, I'm not a nutrition expert or anything. I just try to do my own research. So then um, maybe I can make another podcast, you know, in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, you guys can join me on this health journey, okay? So, but you we guys should... take a note. There's a lot of information <laughs> just to throw at you. We'll have a, a series of a test next time. See if you guys... Study and then do the homework. The lot of key items just we went over today. No, we did not. I didn't even tell them about the balance between the macronutrients or anything. Okay, next oh yeah, episode. that's a chapter two. <laughs> chapter two, exactly. Yeah. So and Luann's like 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 she said zero to hundred. So now she came back with a, no sugar allowed in the house. No 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 no. <laughs> no artificial added, added sugar. sugar. When I said no. There, there still have some artificial added sugar of what I eat. I mean, the other day I ate a mango nada. Okay. Okay. I came back to Texas and I was like, I need to get myself a mango nada drink. Okay. Um, do you see me getting mango nada? <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you know, I think it's a good mindset to say, try to eliminate the added sugar from your diet, right? Every now and then it's okay if you mm -hmm. eat in moderation, you know? But anyway, so that's, that's what's really good. And then obviously we did more workout. And then they give you more snacks. And then I love the stretching because they I've, I've never really stretched. Even if you do one of those YouTube workout, right? After 30 minutes of workout, the, the stretching session is around two minutes. But this one, when I went to the camp, they spent a whole 50 minutes just on stretching. Oh, that's good. And so I really like that because, you know, after the first day, my body was 
dying. I was sore all over. And you know, I'm not really a big bath person. Sean is. Sean loves taking bath. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. But they were telling me your body's going to be sore after your first day. You should probably soak yourself in a nice warm bath with Epsom soap. Is that how you say it? Epsom? Yeah, it's the basically oh. it's the yeah, uh, yeah it's the, basically it's a bath soap, right? Right. And it's supposed to help with your sore muscles. See? I was right all along. <laughs> I almost take a bath every day. Yeah. And, and I look like a lobster after the party. It's too hot, maybe. Yeah, it's too hot. <laughs> it's like warm water, not, you know, super extremely boiling hot water. <laughs> but yeah, I do. And I feel a lot more rejuvenated yeah. after that. So nice. Okay. Do you guys, do, you guys do, yoga? do yoga? They don't have yoga every day, but one of the day they had yoga or you can do HIIT training. Oh. I decided to do HIIT training instead. Because I just like the intensity more. And don't get me wrong, yoga could be tough. You know, I cannot do some of those stretches, but I just prefer the HIIT training class. Do you do yoga with goat? Are you serious? <laughs> no, I wish, right? <laughs> no. Uh, that's one of one my, my bucket, bucket lists list is, is to do the, the yoga, yoga with goat. With goat. Yeah. Uh, I gotta I find, the, find service. the service. I'm sure the they have it. Goat yoga. Yeah. Uh, there's one I found in Hawaii that yeah. they do uh, goat yoga, but on a surfboat. <laughs> That's so crazy, right? Like, how? And I feel sorry for the goat. What if you accidentally drop the goat? Oh, yeah, in the water? Oh, yeah, that, I don't know. I'm sure maybe they have <laughs> protocols for it. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like that every day. The second day, you wake up at 6.30, you come in, they give you a shake, right? You do a workout, you have a snack, you do another workout, and then it's lunch, and then you do another workout, oh my gosh. and then stretch, and then dinner is basically the routine. But sometimes they mix it up, you know, instead of just a workout, you go hiking or you know or you go to the row house so they try to mix it up and had fun and apparently one person was telling me last week they went to laser tag you know and i wasn't there and another thing that they taught me too that i didn't know is how to work out your muscles because i try to do some research i try to watch youtube video and i just never understood the big muscle groups that you have to work out and yes i know about like the biceps and the triceps and obviously working core muscle is very important but after that i don't know any of the other parts or how i should do it you know to make it more efficient yeah, what I often hear from the trainer uh, when I exercise is they tell me the back muscle is very important because mm -hmm. that's like the type of muscle that everybody forget to train. Yeah, I have major back pains every single day. Some days I come out of bed and I almost want to cry because it's just so sore. And of course I thought, oh, I just need a massage, you know, maybe I slept a the wrong way. But I realized it's because I just don't have the core muscle. And that's why I put the strain on my lower back. So what I need to do that I learned is just to improve and strengthen my core muscle. So I've been trying to do that every day, just five to 10 minutes of core muscle, you know, stretches a day. They actually give you this book here to take home and they go over this, right? And so they try to tell you all these muscles group that you should work, right? Your chest, your deltoids, your biceps, your quads, your hamstring, which is really nice. And there was a class that shows you so many varieties of ways you can exercise to strengthen that particular muscle group and you're not stuck with just one way. They just don't rely on just short-term goals, right? They want you to be able to have the proper knowledge, the proper tools that you can use to take home with you. So when I can, I have been trying to strength train and I, I don't think you see it. Yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> Before, I was using the three and five pounds, but now I've been upping my strength training to, you know, the five or the eight or the 10 pounds, it's just depending on what I'm doing. Not that much of a progress, but it is heading in the right direction. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm more of a steady and slow and steady kind of person. So yeah. So another thing I really like about the fitness camp that I went to is that all the coach were really, really knowledgeable. They're really nice. They're so inspiring. Up towards your body, up into a W position. Awesome. The shape or the letter. And it's just the whole atmosphere, right? When you're there, the whole community goal is just to try your best and everybody hype each other, right? You're only really competing against yourself. So it's a really nice experience. And they also have cooking classes too, like a demonstration. Like you don't get to cook, but you sit there, you see the chef 
to cook. And they taught you, same thing about portion control, right? I don't need to eat as somebody who is 6'2", right? Yeah, because one day, right, I came in and I saw two eggs for breakfast. And so I thought, oh, they're giving me two eggs. But then the chef was like, no, the two eggs is for the person after me, which he is a man, which usually have you know more muscle and he was super tall he was over six feet and so the chef remind me saying hey you don't need to eat the same as somebody who is six two and so i was like oh yeah you're right you know you i can't even eat don't. two eggs well they have different proteins uh, on okay. there already yeah, got you, got you. then it makes sense yeah i mean it wasn't that much of a portion control you know it's i'm still eating the same as somebody who is five five you know but i obviously don't need to eat the same as somebody who is you know six two and so at the very last day, so you work out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 5 p.m. is where dinner hits. Here's the problem with dinner. Dinner starts at 5, right? You eat, and then after that, you have the rest of the evening to yourself. Well, I think I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> after that, dinner? That portion, yeah. Yes. I, I mean, would be too. Right. A lot of people come back to their hotel room, and they tell me they're just so tired, they pass out. But... I cannot sleep right away. And so I'm usually up to nine or 10. And so five hours without eating, I, I just get hungry. And so sometimes I would eat extra fruit, you know, or I just, oh, no. I, I mean, it's okay, okay yeah. right? I, know it's, I think it's fine, but at least I'm eating something healthy. I'm on a different diet and different method than Loanne. So sometimes yeah. I'm just like shaking my head because we agree on different things. Yeah. But. I think it worked out for her, so I think it's great. Yeah, and you know, we'll talk about yours in the next episode. You know? Really? Nobody wanna listen to the health things back to back. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll take a break from the yeah, health yeah, in the next yeah, episode. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. So it's like that Monday through Friday. Saturday, it's a half day. Okay. So yeah, so you still wake up, you still get your smoothie and then work out, and then um, we just did a, a walk you know, around a trail together. So that was fun. And then lunch. After lunch is when it's done. So you're not really getting the full seven days as you think you would. That is pretty much my camp experience. Um, would I go again if I can get someone to go with me? I mean, obviously, I don't think you need the camp to be healthy or lose weight, but I need accountability and I, I like it a lot. But when I go back to my hotel room though, it still felt kind of lonely. You know, I wish Sean was with me or I wish my sister was with me so I can share this health journey experience and just talk about it, you know? Oh, and that camp too, it is not just for young people or anything. There are people there ranges from 19 years old who's still in college that went and all the way until I think I met a lady and she said she was like 75. And there was even one lady, she's super nice. She was on a wheelchair, so I don't even know how they... Oh, she's Yeah, I don't know how they modify the workout towards her, but it works, whatever works for her because she'd been there before and now she's back again. Like half the people were returning. And this one guy that I saw, he said he comes back to this camp every single year for at least a few weeks just to keep himself in check, you know, because he needs that accountability too. Got it. So I guess there's an excuse, right? Like, you're never yeah. too late to go to those camps. That's right. I'm not going, but so I think <laughs> you guys are wondering. wondering. You can go? Yeah. So at the very last day, on the Saturday, um, I did my assessment again. So you can compare the before and after. And here is my second assessment. Again, this is only a week, so mm -hmm. I'm not expecting any drastic change. But my body oh, fat impressive. mass went down a tiny bit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 My weight went down a little bit, you know? And here it says I need to add in a 3.5 pound of lean body mass. That's what I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to lose fat and gain muscle. So yeah, that was my camp experience. To sum it up, some things I learned from camp is really what important is just be mindful of what I put in my body is what it is. So before we end the episode, of course, we got to do the sticky, sticky word, word of, of the, the day, day. Um, which is, I thought maybe just the word exercise because everybody can use a little bit more exercise in their life. Okay. Exercise in Japanese is undo. Un. Un. Do. Do. Un do. Un do. Oh, that's yeah. easy. Pretty sure I'm saying it wrong, but it's short, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So in Vietnamese, it can it contains a series of three words put together. Oh, wow. That's a long word. So, yeah. So it's tap. Tap. Pei. Pei. Yop. Tap. Pei. Yop. Tap. 
Updeyo. Yeah, it's Updeyo. three separate words. Oh, so there's no specific word right. for the, uh, the exercise. Huh? Yeah, oh, there, there isn't. A lot of Vietnamese words is, are one word or a combination of multiple words put together. Gotcha. All right. Hopefully you enjoy this super long episode, but you know, uh, hopefully you guys learned something <laughs> from it. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll do something different next episode. Okay. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> McDonald's burgers. No! Just kidding, just kidding. In moderation is fine, obviously. Okay, bye. Bye.